Hi guys, and uh, welcome to this week's uh, Q&A. There is power on this thing. But, um, let's see. Just gonna wait and see if uh, somebody taps in. So, so we need, uh, so we, <laughs> I'm just gonna wait and see if somebody does it. So we know if the sound is working and everything like that. So when anyone is in, let me know if you can hear what I'm saying. Hi Storbro! Isabella are great. Okay, so this live Q&A function this way that you guys ask the questions that you have and I will answer them when I read them in the comment below. I uh, have uh, got these um, emails so far where people can send in their questions but the last few weeks I think people may not have known that they can so if you have any questions just send them per email or send them uh, to me so then I can read it up in between the online questions that people are asking so welcome everyone hi Nate uh, everything is fine great Anna oh Marco long time no see <laughs> um, Hi Holly. So <laughs> I'll just read the questions that I have so far. And by the way, welcome to my uh, welcome to my bedroom. It's the only place where the sun is not like <laughs> overshining everything. Um, first question I have here is where do cat comes from and what are their purpose here? So if I look into animal in general, let me take it from the highest perception. First we created earth and we had an agreement of what should be on earth in order of having it to create the matrix, right? To create um, the beings who should be part of it. And you can say that these animals, it's part of the matrix on one hand. On the other hand, it's part of mother earth. So it's part of this creation. When we created the planet earth, we agreed upon which kind of animals that should be upon it. When we recreated planet earth, so after the dinosaurs, after second dynasty thingy, um, and every, animal has an expression like an entity form that they are here to represent the animals who are connected to you it feels as if they have a piece of their your soul within them you are binded together so they are often representing the love that you are yet to discover within oneself that is why we have these close bond between humans and animals um, or everything else that is because it's just pure unconditionally love this one asks um, specific about cats because cats is representing an energy of knowledge and an energy of awareness and also linked to another planet system where we have these aliens looking like cats <laughs> but that's more like their shape of their hat, heads um, so cats are, uh, are representing through many generations something uh, special symbols for many people uh, on our planet. Question number one. Um, so guys, this is a live Q&A. I need you guys to ask me the questions. I only have three here, so. Hi, Simon. Um, the energy of the labyrinth, how does it work? The energy of the labyrinth, how does it work? Oh wait, the Makaba, the energy of the labyrinth, how does it work? Um, let's look into that. It is, that it, it is as it is with everything else on our planet that we have created. So one thing, 
bit soon. And so one thing is the whole world as we created it with animals and stuff like that in the first team when aliens came here and we recreated it and we learned to n n min manip manipulate manipulate entities <laughs> in order of restructuring and recreating and integrating um, other energy forms from outside to enter our space we have some of these power places like pyramids are one of them they're recreating a grid around the world uh, they have we have these portals stuff like that and this maglapa is a part of it it is a group of beings who um, have found out how to manipulate and use energy in a different way and form if you look into this labyrinth i don't know what she's talking about but when i look into it <laughs> it is representing different codes different forms different pathways and it's not only representing one energy form it's uh, built on multiple layers um, and we as beings have only reached the first six of them Sufi Rumi Henning, hi uh, oops. Let's see There was a question somewhere mm, Here, Holly Why do I have fibromology? What is it? Um. Okay, so It is representing Often it represents a period in life where you have been overstressed, overused, have not listening to your own borders and therefore have suppressed anger and lacking energy. It is a part where it feels as if the energy is sucked out of your, you and also your muscles and um, to the point where you can no longer keep crossing your own borders and boundaries. To the point where you need to put focus upon softening up and listening to yourself and learn to know yourself in a different form in a different way there is often a link to learning to listen to a being on a deeper level so not only emotionally but also we are the things we eat we are the things we integrate we are the people that we're surrounding by um, we are not all the same <laughs> so what works for one doesn't work for another and and we cannot judge ourselves like yeah well I only work two hours a day and this other person worked for five hours so who am I what you need to do is you need to only measure you with yourself and to constantly feel how can I bring love into this situation how can I bring strength back into my body into my own being um, how can I feel empowered with the energy that I have so if you would look into how to create as much freedom within yourself and as much strength within yourself as possible and it is really to put focus upon re-strengthening and reconnecting with your physical self and making um, become conscious where there is stored anger or stored um, distrust within your body and within your being if there are stored traumas look into it release it and always every day do something that gives you a feeling of strength for me it is often running at the beach or these kind of thing i don't have this people more like g thing but i pass out all the time nobody knows why right so what i do is i go through it and i go out and i move with the flow until i feel strengthened within oneself so this whole feeling of reconnecting and regrounding within your own being i hope this uh, helped you a bit Isabella, how can I learn to control my emotions? Well, you're not really supposed to control your emotions. What you are, and I know why you ask. <laughs> so what you are to do is get to know yourself. Get to know your own patterns, what you respond and react upon. And become conscious about the situations if uh, what you're projecting out really has something to do with the other or if it is the emotional state you're in with within yourself then you can learn to um, to navigate in a different form um, so i was never <laughs> i was never a fan of controlling anything because i believe that through flow and authenticity uh, we create peace within right 
So, but it is really to get to know your emotions better and go through your emotions in order of becoming free of them. So instead of keep repeating the same emotions and, and identify with the this is me, then you go through it to find that strength underneath. So you solve the emotional issues, the energy that is linked to and connected to, and in that form you become free of it. It is to replace old traumas with new good energies and new great uh, experiences. So for example, if you had distrust in someone once, uh, you might have this reflecting with every person you meet. In order of, re <laughs> in, of changing that, you go through the trauma, the anger, the pain, the forgiveness of the person by understanding that person and its reaction and then yourself. From there, um, you replace it with new experience. So you meet people you might not trust on up front, but then you walk through that distrust to see what is behind it. And then you meet trust or you meet love. And then you can replace that energy form within oneself. Joyce, Nath, Nath, Natsa, uh, Tijana. Hi Elisa, can you talk more about the new children? What do they need from us? Ah, this is a great one. So, the new children need this world that we want to create, right? We are in this big shift uh, on the planet and we cannot keep the old order up anymore. So therefore, um, we are the bridge builders. We are here to recreate the old world reality into a new world reality that fits them better. They are representing purity, authenticity and a higher level of consciousness at once. So we really need to let go of these old control uh, ways in order of shifting into more flow and restructuring the matrix that we live in. On a more practical uh, level, like home to home, mom, mom and son or mama and daughter, the best thing we can do is giving them space to express themselves, giving them their opportunity to grow within the field that they feel the most flow, that they feel the most drawn to. Try not to put them too much into the boxes of what we should and should not do. Only have a few, a few uh, staple rules. So they have some kind of structure that they can feel safe within. And for the rest, uh, help them to feel as much free within the, what they do. These newborn children are responding purely on what you're feeling inside what you're sending out and not what you're saying to them. These newborn kids are often hypersensitive or hyperintelligent uh, or difficulties with groundation. So they need, they have the urge for more space, often more nature and um, integrating in smaller or bigger groups. So really get to know your child. And the funny thing is that every kid that we have is always a reflecting affliction of a side within ourselves. Sometimes this side uh, can be very very intense a, a part of us. Often it's intent a part of our inner self that we wish that we were or we wanted to be more and then we have this great kid who are it all. It's, or it can be exactly the other thing, the thing that we wanted to move away from. So really truly look into that because when you can accept that within you your child will feel free in that within itself <laughs> food also it is it means for them to eat plant fruit is it meant for them to eat plant fruit um, not all of them not all of them so what we need to remember and need to understand is that we in we are in this transition phase where we are still in physical forms and these physical forms have a dna from our ancestors and the structures oh, it was the pigeon and the structures that we chose to be one with so some of these uh, newborn new age kids actually do need to eat more solid grounded food 
because that their physical self uh, and cells are still responding on the old ways. Um, many of them, on the other hand, are ready for living on the more fruit and vegetable base, but it really goes all out to everyone that you should all feel it in yourself and really feel where your child is at and know that <laughs> as a human being, we are not one, we are many, we are DNA from our ancestors, we are our soul, we are the energy flow that we are moving within in this exact time and we are ever changing. So with food and stuff like that we have guidelines and we can say what is healthy, what is a vibration only match, but we need to always uh, look into the whole. Um, so this is the best way I could answer you, which is not the simple answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> but internally, it will be perfect if we all could be fruitarian, it will be a lot easier on so many levels. There will be so much less anger in the world. But for now, we are in this transition phase and everything goes step by step. Everybody has to reintegrate step by step and learn and develop in consciousness and have their whole body system to be in one with that layer of consciousness of which they move within. Hey Lisa, hello. Hi Carsten. And Michelle, Yannick, watching, Angelina. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Hey Lisa, do I love, I love milk. Frederick, you love flower fabrics? Hi Lisa, do I love mel fabric? Are you asking me if you love a guy or a horse or I don't know? <laughs> Tell me, I, I don't know. Mel fabric. Write it in the comment below, uh, Maike. I, I don't know what you mean. And Nook. Ta da! We are thinking about what will be a good school and way to teach uh, for Yannick. Shall we search or will there be possibilities? Or there is maybe a possibility we did not think of yet and you can tell about it. So um, step number one is already taken to find out uh, his level of intelligence. Do -do. So that already put him a classi classify him in a setting where you have opportunities. And I believe the best thing is just to look which opportunities that feels good. And if something doesn't resonate or something doesn't work out, um, it is because that something else is waiting. Um, I don't really see a problem with this. I see a new door opening and also a kind of a release. The most important thing is just that he uh, have the opportunity to change settings from where he are to wherever he is to become. And also just that moment of awareness within oneself of being able to identify himself with a high intelligent kid, uh, even create more peace in understanding himself and also for you guys. So I think the first step is taken and um, well, it will come of itself, but look around. Look around and it will show up. How can I say it differently? W look at your possibility, see what feels most light, go for it. Mikey, no, that was not what I wanted to write. Do I love myself already? What is my next step to take? <laughs> well, Mikey. If you did love yourself already, I think you wouldn't ask. And um, when you ask like that, it sounds as if it is a goal, a reach, a point. And when we reach this point, then we are there. But where, what is there? Self-love is an ever-flowing thing. Self-love is an everyday practice. Self-love is a state of being. Uh, so for me, Self-love is, is a flow. Someday I love myself more than I do other days. And I think it, this is a part of life. So it's really to find peace within the process that you're in. And be okay every time you discover, oh, I didn't love this or I didn't love that. Well, then you have the chance and the opportunity to dive deep through that and regain that love and trust within oneself. Mm. 
I don't know. I keep pushing buttons. It's not on purpose. Sorry. Uh, I just saw my normal weight. Oh, great, Anna. I am so proud of you. A few months ago, uh, and I still have these. I am so thirsty. I could drink the whole ocean kind of experience. I feel like there's not about a physical need anymore. What do you think about this? Uh, can create so much water fluid that some kind of spiritual thing's gonna... Anna, I have the same thing today, especially, but the last few weeks. So it is a uh, part of the collected uh, consciousness that's going on and you are super hypersensitive and you have issues uh, to ground within yourself. So what it is, is that you are taking in so many energies for everything around you and you have the urge and the need to clean yourself out and also your liver wants to be restored, your gallop layer wants to be restored. In general, your whole body is reaching a point where it now has the opportunity to heal itself before it had to survive and now is getting to the point where there's space within that to heal itself. Water is full of love and consciousness. Water is full of uh, minerals. And this is the tap water from Budapest. <laughs> um, so water is really truly there to connect with every cell within our body. So it is the craving for... It is your body craving this. And that is fully okay. The only thing is of course... And you feel this very intensely also because you are so sensitive. The only thing that is important is of course that you are not on drinking 8 liters of water a day because then you will flush everything out that you eat as well. So all the vitamins I mean. So it is to really find a balance but if you have a period where you need to just drink a lot it is okay because it is... <laughs> I love you so much. It is in um, connection with the flow that you're going through in this moment. And I'm so, so proud of you. So proud. And you look, uh, by the way, amazing. Um, da -da -da. Hi, hello. Hi, Pauline. Jimmy. Uh, thank you so much. It's great. Jason was with me. <laughs> and he was really happy to see you. Oh, I miss him so much. <laughs> And you too. I'm gonna come to Sweden soon, by the way. It's gonna be great. Okay. Do, do, do. Pauline. I've been feeling intense angelic energy codes entering my body these last days. I also feel more global. Do you also perceive more of these energy landing in our bodies? Love you. Um, there is this big shift going on globally and it is inviting different layers of consciousness uh, and we are all are vibrationally matched to whatever we are ready for so yes for some people uh, these codes are integrating they are ready to step more and more into their true nature and into what they are to represent within this life time many people in this era or in this shift into a new era is stepping into their rightful shoes of what they are to present here on this planet within this time being because this shift had made them see and look deeper within themselves and understand what is needed to bring down here um, so yes the wave that you belong to are uh, a wave there are coming closer and closer to themselves and deeper understanding of where they come from and what they are to represent here in this time Anna? Question 2. How do I know if I'm an indigo child or something else? Well, I love all these categories, right? I think you're a little bit of everything. No. Um, it is all about what you feel. What you feel is the right thing for you to identify with, you take it in. It is what is within your heart and nothing else. For, for me personally, I... Uh, I feel a little bit home here, a little bit home there, and yet nowhere fully. Um, but you, you need to know that we've been a lot of places. So you are a uh, hybrid, <laughs> connected of many different energy forms. But you for sure have some, a lot of angelic being within you. 
and I could categorize you as an indigo child. But most indigo child is hyperactive or uh, the other way around, like introvert. Um, so, yeah, you should really just feel what feels best for you. You are belonging to the new age, for sure the new energy you are belonging to that that we need to integrate here on the planet for sure and you are made out of so much light and life on earth has been and still are quite a struggle even that you're full of so much love so whatever you feel the best to identify yourself with you go for it Helle, would it be a good idea to take vitamins or better to eat fruit? It really depends uh, where you're standing in your life and how much vitamins you need. I would of course say that the natural raw way will always be the best. But reality is just that sometimes we need a lot more than what we are able to, to take in at that point. So, um, are, you, are you ready for and able to? Eat a lot of vegetables, eat a lot of different kind of fruits in order of getting the, the vitamins that you need in this moment. Or um, would it be easier for you to do it in a more vitamin form? I would always say that with my vitamins you need to make sure that it's a good organic brand um, that you feel confident with. There is this law that says that only 40% of the value within the pill has to uh, be vibrating and the rest of it can be pure whatever they put it together with. So if you choose to do vitamin pills, uh, really go for a, a trustworthy brand. And if you can get it in liquid form or powder form, it would be better than the pill form. If you choose to do it via vegetables and fruits and stuff like that, what I would do was get let go of control and just feel from day to day which color is calling and which um, yeah, what my body actually are craving. So the question lies within you: What are you ready for? Hey, Morgi! Thank you, beautiful answer again, and so true. This is how we feel relief. <laughs> I'm happy. Hey sis, good evening. Hey broski. Uh, Tatiana, can you talk more about life purpose and living it? Does it find us or do we find it or do we search for it? Okay, so life purpose. What we need to understand is that before we came here, we already knew. So there is this part within us that always know. There's this part within us that will always draw us in the direction of whatever our life purpose is um, often if, if we search this too much what we do is we search in what is already created right we search in what other people do we search in what is already there to step into that other people have done but if we fully surrender to just be often it occurs all by itself um, I believe it's a good idea to create the intention that you wish to become more aware of your life purpose, but going out and search it would not benefit uh, you. It is for some people, so everything is, nothing is ever the same, right? So for some people, their life is a never lasting journey. Their life purpose is to search their life purpose, which has nothing to do with their life purpose, but their life purpose may be to travel from place to place, to to experience different things in life, to uh, integrate different parts in different uh, locations and help uh, recreating connections of where in those moments that they are, are walking within. So for them, <laughs> their drive is searching their life purpose but their life purpose is what they do along the road so your everyday life is your life purpose the only thing you have to do is listen to your heart do i feel free within myself wherever i am or do i feel i need to move somewhere else to step into something and figure out this is not where i belong it is not to make a mistake it's not wrong 
it's part of your journey and for some people they need to just taste everything in life and not really be one place to set and steady and that is their life purpose so what we need to do is we need to change our perception of what a life purpose is and step into what feels right where do i feel the flow and how long do i feel good in where i am and if i doesn't feel good do i feel i can grow here or do i need to redraw myself and walk a different direction thank you Niklas, hey! Uh, Isabella, I feel both connected to Indigo and Critical Charles. I am a combination of those two. Um, Isabella, I decided that I am not gonna tell you. I think that you... Yes. So for you, what you need to do is you need to just really be okay with yourself and love yourself without any simple category. And it doesn't matter if you are flamingo or you are a sea eagle, just love yourself for who you are. That's it. Fuck the titles. Benjamin, hi. <laughs> um, I keep having severe feelings of anxiety and I can't see or speak. It comes out of nowhere where I'm otherwise happy. Is it just fear moving uh, forwards and warning of my soul of particular f persons or environment I am in at that time? Often it is echoes from the past. If I look into your system and also why you have the fibromyalgia thing. <laughs> Is that there is a lot of these echoes and a lot of these warning signals in your body. You need a lot of peace and space to heal this and truly feel that love within yourself. So if there is all these people who keep triggering it, just uh, ask them to leave you. <laughs> until that you find some peace and strength to stand up within oneself. Um, and softness and love to dare to re incarnate more within your physical being it comes in waves because right now we uh, there's so much is going on on the planet and when the fear is there we are vibrationally matched to what is flowing through so even that you are happy you even fear happiness because within happiness you learn that the next to happen is something bad so then it's better to control it so if you come too close to happiness you get afraid if you're too far away from happiness you get afraid if you stand in the middle you think something is wrong so <laughs> So I know it's a really hard process, but I have a lot of faith in you. And it really just give yourself the time and the space and allow yourself to say yes and no. It is all okay. It is your life. Okay, I think we are getting, uh, I don't know how far we're in. Hey, gorgeous. You're so sweet. Uh, why is it so difficult for me? To choose a healthy lifestyle and take care of my body, I keep going back and forwards. Now, now new now habits that I know they're no longer dis oh, so sorry they no longer serve me. What can I do to be healthy and powerful within my body? Okay. Um, when we have patterns. We created it for a reason. We created it because for whatever reason in that time being, we believed it would help us. Then we become conscious and aware that this pattern is unhealthy. And often we know that it does no longer serve us in where we want to go. But what if what these patterns are representing within your system, if you did not change that yet? What if the patterns, what they give you, that feeling of peace, of fulfillment, or whatever it gives you, which feeling it gives you. If you have not found a replacement for that within yourself, you will keep searching the same form, the same patterns, because that somehow gives you a feeling of safety or groundation. Where this new healthy lifestyle is super exciting, but also something that you don't identify with yet. Where the old patterns, feel safe because you identify yourself with it and, and it have provided you with a safe feeling 
for so long. So if I were you, I would look into where the pattern comes from, where it started, not the unhealthy part, but which positive part did it bring you, which positive emotion did it fulfill you with, and how to recreate that in a different form. Sensitive indigo here with green brown eyes. Great, Marshall. Welcome. Uh, great, great. Wow, I am sure this is a Dutch name. Great, ra. It's like r g gri grit. Anyway, grit slag Müllers. I'm so sorry. I pronounced your name very bad. The 9th of March, I fell badly down from my stairs. My knee is so seriously hurt. I don't know if I can heal. Uh, gathering yoga and go walking were my hobbies. I meditate and I do everything to heal myself with a lot of exercises. So I don't see any question in this. <laughs> but I'm sorry for you, Phil. And... Um, and it's very, very good that you are, yeah, you're trying to find your way. But if I was you, I, I would also look into the emotions that lies underneath. So if you have hard emotions, look into them. If there's sorrow linked to the knee, look into that. If there's standing up for yourself linked to the knee, look to that. So allow yourself to look to the emotionally aspect behind the injuries and then continue doing uh, what feels good and what creates the most freedom of flow within yourself hey mariella hey love what is my soul mission what do i need to empower it well you are on it already you are it you are doing it you just need to trust yourself and get a little bit out so come and play with me on my retreat <laughs> or somebody else's retreat, whatever feels good. Hello, I do recommend uh, Solidary Vitamins from Denmark. Actually, it's the Solaria, Solaria, it's really good, guys. I know the guy who makes them, and he's really beautiful. Uh, I have good experience with that brand as well. Thomas Nilsson, Barbara, nothing to ask, but love to listen to. Well, welcome, Miranda. I also have a question. What is my soul mission? Patricia. I keep giving the same answer, guys. Because it is not my job to tell you what your soul mission is. I know it would be easy. And there's a lot of, of these uh, guru guru who does that. But I believe that everybody knows it within their heart. That it is for you to discover. It's great with guidelines. And it's beautiful when people can tell you... A little bit this and a little bit that. But the truth is that until now, you guys who have asked me, you know it already. You just need confirmation. And this time, it's about you to trust yourself and trust what you feel here. Is there somebody who wants to help you in this process? I don't know what you mean. In what process? I think you should help yourself. Hmm, it's nice to hear you again. Well, Jeroen, welcome. <laughs> nice that you're here. My kid, you have the feeling that you're always alone. You have the feeling that nobody is ever there for you. So this is a part of your pattern. But the truth is there is a lot of people, beings, uh, angels who are there that will love to help you. And they are already. You just need to open your eyes. But you can only do that when you're out of this pattern of uh, you are there alone. Thank you, it helped me a lot. Oh, you're so welcome. Holly, I'm grateful. You are beautiful. Hi, Nick. Ah, oh, Eleanora, what a beautiful name. Robert, you're amazing. Keep joining. You're amazing too. So much. <laughs> Alien brother. Uh, thank you. I, I'm not sure why I'm waving. I keep pushing the wrong button. I'm so sorry. Um, let's see. So I feel I'm here to help others, but also get stuck when they cling on me. It's so it's so stuck my energy. <laughs> it's too hard to relax. I envy you sometimes, love you at the same time, and I need some space 
but don't want to feel needy help. Okay, so let's get this cleared up. I get super drained also. Or super out of balance. Like, I pass out five times today because that something is not in balance. <laughs> Energy advice. So don't envy me. We all have our own journeys and we all have our own struggles and we all just are trying to find our own place within this madness and beauty of uh, life. We are here to help others and it does cost energy but as more as we heal ourselves and as more we learn to set our own borders and boundaries, we draw before it becomes too much, as easier it becomes to help more people and feel more at ease within oneself. It has a lot to do with self-love and boundaries. And what I had to learn a lot is this thing about boundaries. So keep on going, Marshall. And uh, just um, self-love. And if I look inside of you, it's, it's also this feeling of loneliness, I guess. Um, knowing that you're good enough and fill up those um, centers of love within yourself. So when you give something away... It's not like they take your love, but it's more like you share what you already have a massive amount of. Um, so you keep fulfilling yourself once again. Hi, Espion. Uh, I would love to see you in help sometimes again. We can play. Well, else I would love to. I'm gonna go to Budapest in one and a half week from now. <laughs> I'm gonna fly um, but when I come back let's do something in Welp let's make this a plan I would love to let's, we will make it happen Nick, maybe you can call Ilse Ilse um, thank you, you're welcome love okay okay, okay, okay Yuris, hi Lisa what do you feel the role of the indigo people and then all cultures is in this time. I believe their connection with the respect of nature, healing, metals and spirituality is value for the modern world. Okay, so we have a lot of light beings incarnated at this moment. We also luckily have a lot of these uh, earth-binded spiritual beings. And they are so beautiful. This is what you mean with old culture. So yes. We are the people who wants to reconnect to Mother Earth because Mother Earth is, yeah, well, it's our planet. And in order of being um, healthy and expanding and exploring on a deeper level, we need to come back to nature. We need to come back to a bit of where we started, but also mix it with the knowledge that we now have gained. There's nothing wrong with technology. Technology is a part of what is already created in other planet systems, but in different physical matters, of course. Um, but in order on restoring balance on our planet, planet Earth, the planet of water and greens, <laughs> we need to realign with that and we need to connect with this because everything is living. Everything is consciousness. We are no more important than the water flowing in the ocean. We are no more important than the trees and the roots and the birds. We are equal. And within that equality, we can rise together and create a beautiful world reality. But as more as we destroy <laughs> ourselves and our planet, as farther away, further away we come from that natural state of being within ourselves and within our planet. What happens around us is a direct reflection of what is going on within us and the other way around. So we need to take responsibility for our own self, how we treat ourselves, the people around us. Now even our computers, because they are getting more and more consciousness, but also the water, the trees and everything that exists. We are together in this. Okay, Mike, thank you. I will open and look. You are so welcome, love. Um, Patricia, I'm almost, I am almost always tired. Can, how can I improve that? Maybe you could spice up your life a little bit. You know, do something new. Do some ice showers, um, bungee jump, jump on one leg. 
So often when we get super tired, it's because we feel stuck in some form or because we really need rest. So you need to figure out which one of the two. And then um, give yourself time and space take it step by step so if i go do something crazy i know that i need a few days to like recover afterwards um but it still brings me that step further to refine myself to develop myself sometimes when we get too tired it can be because that we are overworking and we need to really boom reset allow ourselves to uh, to sleep but other times it can because be because we've been too much on the sleeping pillow for too long and we need to get out there and uh, try something new, experience life. Okay guys, um, I think this was the last question for now. Beautiful. I just want to say thank you for being here today and uh, next week, oh no, next week I will still be here Friday. Yeah, so next week at 7 o'clock we're going to do this new Q&A. If you are sitting with your questions now, you're welcome to send it uh, to me on an email. So I can read it up in between or else just uh, tune in next week and we will go through this together. I love you guys and see you later. Doo -doo